It's easy. Speak easy, baby. There you have it. Uh, that, that's your new Detroit Lions head coach, Dan Campbell, a.k.a. Matt Campbell. I don't, I don't know what the running joke was on that one. Uh, maybe maybe somebody accidentally said it. I, I, I think Rob Wood actually called him Matt Campbell earlier. I don't know where that joke came from. Uh, if there's any concerns with him as a head coach, is if it's, it's, it is absolutely if he accidentally actually put his name as Matt Campbell. That does concern me uh, because CT is a thing and brain damage is a thing. My man did play football. Other than that, though, uh, I guess takeaways from it, man, he, he started off emotional, I think maybe a little nervous, and I, which I can get. Um, passionate. The passion was definitely there. Look, man, anything's better than what we just had in there, man. I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, at this point, like I'm, I'm going to be in love with, with anything regardless because I wasn't happy with what was there beforehand. I like the fact that he is a player's coach and, you know, he spoke on it just there at the end, you know, allowing personalities to, to be themselves as long as they're pulling the weight in the same way, as long as they're there for the team. And I mean, that that's absolutely a trait and attribute I, I like as a leader because, there's pieces of the team that can be like that, but are majorly productive for you. I think Terrell Owens was one of that throughout his career. You know what I'm saying he 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 was like a mess in the locker room and whatnot, but he was a great, he was a phenomenal player, man. And he, he always showed up for his team. I think he played the Super Bowl with a broken, broken freaking leg. Not to sound like Kurt Angle, but he's my broken freaking neck. But um, other than that, man, I'm trying to think back on the on the questions and comments and stuff like that. As far as X's and O's go, guys, if you missed it, he said he's more of a uh he he wants to match. He wants to do, he wants his matchups against your weakest your weaknesses team's weaknesses. So like if, if he spoke an, an example uh, on a left tackle, if we if we have a better left tackle and have a, a weak right end, then we're gonna run the you know what I'm saying we're gonna counter that ball to that side every time. I mean if we have to run it ten times, open it fast, that's what we're gonna do. And and I like that man. Um, I think that's a, a phenomenal philosophy of coaching. I I think that's how you watch like a lot of the great teams like the Patriots who. Right. Like if you think about the Patriots in their prime, and I'm not saying like speaking on them as if they're great now, but the Patriots, like when they were good, Tom Brady and Sonny Michelle and these multiple uh, running backs that they had, there was no like identity to the team. You know what I'm saying they never really had like a, a, they had uh, Randy Moss at one point, but Bill Belichick never truly has an identity. Defense, maybe, yeah, but week to week, the offense changes and it's based upon who he's playing. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a great philosophy when it comes to the X's and O's. I think we're really dependent on. Um, the, the coordinator hire, as far as like actual, you know, plays and whatnot go, I'll keep it real at that point. Um, you know, listen to him talk, and I get the nervousness of like being a head coach and whatnot, and this being your introductory press conference. It's, it's like a dream come true, it's a real type of moment. But he did seem like nervous and a little hesitant. He was just nervous and nervous for sure because it kind of seemed like he was he wasn't really able to articulate certain things there at the very beginning. But again. I, I get the moment. You know what I'm saying? It, he's, a, he's a first time head coach. Uh, this is the introductory press conference. At times, almost felt like the dude was crying, which passion is something we could use in this city right now uh, at the head coaching position. And it could also be, I can, I'll can i fully admit, it could hinder you as well. Um, but I don't think Dan Campbell is, is that type of guy. He seems to be like a stand up type of guy. Um, the fact that, you know, one of the reporters went ahead and asked him that bullshit question about, you know, who, I don't even fucking need these headphones in right now. But they asked him that bullshit question about when he was uh, at AM. And made what could be seen as an anti-gay comment. It wasn't really anti-gay. It was kind of just pro-straight. You know what I'm saying? But um, he didn't have to answer that. He could have dismissed that. He could have he could have kind of gone at him or, or came at that guy with the attitude, but he didn't. He addressed it, and I respect him for that, man. Because I, I fully admit, if I was asked that question and I'm in the position that Dan Campbell's in, I would have been a little like, you know, fuck you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he didn't, man. He, he answered the question, and and I I respect that. Um, again, guys, this is just a press conference. Uh, we're not in the field yet. We don't know who we have coordinator spots, but I feel like as a leader, so far he feels he seems to be 100 percent there. Um, a hot topic that people want to touch on is the Stafford stuff. They're all kind of dancing around it, but I do respect the fact that they're not they're not like uh, they're not off rip saying we're keeping them. You know what I'm saying? And that that that's enough to let me know that if they find a solution to you know, escort him out of here because truthfully at this point, we know guys, as much as Matthew Stavridis gave us great moments and I, and I'll fully admit he's a good quarterback. He's not a bad quarterback, but he's also not the answer. He's definitely not the answer or solution to our problems at $25 million a year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he is a $19 million cap hit. If we lose him this year, whether it's trade or cuts, I doubt we're going to cut him uh, for trade. Yeah, I could see that, but like, what are we truly going to get for him? Um, 
guys, the cap space is a big thing in the NFL. Uh, Matthew Stafford has a big fat ass cap, and I don't know how well that's gonna you know go during uh, trade obligations. But let me know how you guys feel too, man. I'm come. I'm clicking some of these comments. Uh, I'm sold on Dan. Izzy seven 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 says I'm sold on Dan, even if he doesn't want me to be sold on him. Well, he don't want you. To, why would he? Why would he want you to be sold on him? Doctor Detroit is down with Dan. That's what's up, man. Uh, Troy says, I wonder if he would run the same defense as Russia or switch it back. I have a question for you guys. Please comment and help me out with this one. I'm thinking it through my head right now. What do the Patriots run a 3 4 all the time? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I said attacking, so I'm wondering too. Uh, Carlos is a troll. That guy is a troll for asking that question, but I definitely respect him for answering that. He said, uh, let the young, young player play and experienced QB back him up. Ooh, baby. He said kind of as a joke a little bit in the beginning, too, but I, I don't know where you're going with that. It, he kind of danced around it. Dan sounds like he gets it. Attack the weaknesses. Uh, put your playmakers in matchups so they can win. A thousand percent, man. That's like I think that's the go-to philosophy. I'm not a head coach. I'm not an NFL coordinator or anything like that. But, like, that's how I would coach. And I, and I look at the teams, like, having success. Obviously, he said that's Sean, Sean Payton's, you know what I'm saying, his, his route to success or his coaching philosophy. And look at New Orleans Saints. They've been doing it 15 plus years. Like you said, I think Drew Brees. I mean, I, I know he had spent some time in San Diego and whatnot, but uh, 20 seasons in the NFL, 10 years, 10 years, 10 seasons in the post, you know what I'm saying, in the postseason, making it to the playoffs. So, I mean, that's a great coaching philosophy to have. I know he spent majority, the, the, the best best of his years were in New Orleans, and that was under Sean Payton. Um, I'm, I'm pumped, man. I, I'm really. Even more so pumped. I'm not gonna say I'm pumped to find out these coordinators because we're gonna hear some names and we may get some hires and we don't know who the fuck they are. I'm gonna keep it real with you. So, and we may look it up and then be pumped afterward. But I can't. And I'm right away based off who, you know who the name is and whatnot. But I'm excited just to have usher a new era as far as like leadership here in the organization. Uh, yep, not some silly system that we'll figure out after four games. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, be a fucking chameleon. Change game to game because they can't prep for the shit you did last week because you're not going to do the same shit this week. They got to prep the fucking bolster where they're weak at because, like, oh, fuck. They know we, we're, we're our secondary is weak. You know what I'm saying? They know our, our, our right side is weak. You know what I'm saying? Like, team, it's, it makes it harder for teams to prep against you as well when, when you're, you're playing that chameleon style. Like, like, you have no true identity other than beating motherfuckers up. You know what I'm saying? And, and speaking of that, he said he wants to do that too. He said he wants to, <laughs> I, I was dying and I wish that this wasn't live. Otherwise, I would have cut the clip and put it up here. Um, somebody, you know, he, said he wants the team to take on the identity of the city and he wants opposing teams or people who come here and visit, uh, to leave the city beat up. And I, and he was, he like corrected himself. Cause obviously Detroit has a bad rep. He's like, Oh, not like the tourists and stuff like that, which is pretty funny. Uh, another moment that I guess I think back on that press conference was Don Moback. Uh, somebody asked him if he's surprised that Don's still here. Cause Don, big Don was on the team when, uh, when Dan Campbell was here in Detroit, the mule, they called him and, uh, he almost spit out his water. That shit was funny as hell. Um, let's get some of these comments real quick too. Yep, not the sum. Yep, I sent that one. Are the offensive coordinators a specialist in training uh, mobile quarterbacks? Did they sign? Uh, did they officially sign him though? You know what I'm saying? Hey, Biwata. Shout out to Steve O. If you guys don't know, I, I cover lots of MMA on this page. Uh, we got some free Thursday too, and uh, it's, it's not Thursday. I'm tripping. I woke up briefly like, right before the press conference. Uh, McNabb, Vic Jackson are some among his developments. Who is who is the offensive coordinator, Dr. Detroit? I, I missed that one. If it came out in the news, I seen the defensive coordinator was uh, rumored to be the defensive back from the, the the Saints, which I'm not necessarily mad at. Uh, when I think back to a, a secondary coach as a defensive coordinator, I think back to Terrell Austin as well, who did a great job. Granted, he had a phenomenal roster to, to, to you know to, to game plan with. Uh, we had guys like Dominic Sue. Nick Fairley, Ziggy Anza. I do think, though, and as much as everyone wants to call this a retooling, um, I don't necessarily see this our team as as that. I think this is a rebuild. Um, I think that we need a lot, lot more pieces. I think I get the will part. You know what I'm saying he, he said he could will yourself, and and you can strategize and coordinate to you know to get W's. I mean, football is as much a chess game as it is physicality, and maybe even more so a chess game. But on the defensive side, I feel like you do need those playmakers, and we definitely lack that. Uh, in the draft, I'm not big on college ball. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys, so I can't name anyone who's coming out of here that's gonna for sure be a, a you know a stud for us, uh, the number seven pick, and on the defensive side of the ball. But then again, who really can? You know what I'm saying we see th these guys come out with mock drafts, and and obviously guys you know become busts in the first round every single year. But 
we keep my fingers crossed that the GM that we have now and Brad Holmes will be able to provide that value for us because maybe it's, it's said, you know, around the league, it's rumored around the league that this guy does know those things. He's not the guy to draft bus. He has been taking studs in the late rounds. And, and I have my opinion on that. Some people, you know, don't like it, but uh, it is what it is, man. Uh, James Urban is being looked at hard. Is that a, a college guy? Uh, Dan didn't BS us. He's, he said, call a spade a spade. More players to get excited about on offense than defense. Yeah, it's yeah for the draft or for like our team. I think both both sides. You know, what I'm saying for the draft and the team. I mean, Micah Parsons, he's a stud linebacker from Penn State. We shall see, man. I don't know if he'll make it to number seven though. You know, what I'm saying that's that's the name I was looking at too. He said he should be there at seven. Shit, you guys want to look at the draft order? We could do that right now. Um, a couple of guys from the DSA. I, I invited. Hey, if you guys want to have in the chat, let me know your opinion on the press conference and what the Detroit Lions got going on. I got to be excited, man. I'm, I'm excited just from the fact that we're moving on from the old regime. I can't uh, can't say that I'm, I'm upset. I was upset originally when we didn't hire Ed Dodd, but, uh, you know, I'm going to give this dude, Brad Holmes, a chance. Um, I have you know, I don't have any choice, bro. I'm a Lions fan, and I don't want him to fail. And it's not that I, I thought he was bad or anything like that. I just kind of unproven commodity for me, obviously. I mean, that's, that's, that's the most case for new general managers, um, but also – I just wanted that dots. That that was my disappointment in it. Uh, let's look at the NFL draft order, though. Let's check this out. Let's see if this one does. I'm going to look at some mock drafts, too. We shall see. I'm letting this low before I put it on the screen, guys. Uh, I don't want it, like, glitching up and chopping up the screen and shit. Uh, let's see what we got in the comment section, though. Uh, Micah is Jared Davis to me. No, 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 no. Jared Davis, no, come on now. I thought Mike, Micah, like, rushed. Not allow fan ballot. Okay. They're giving me last year's draft. That's not what I want. But I, I am excited to have a guy who is a draft specialist rather than a pro specialist just because um, I feel like you build heavily on – you build heavily on those rookie contracts. Like I, I did a whole video. When I said it's time for Stafford to go, a lot of people were mad at me for that, but it, a lot of it is not really based upon his performance. Somewhat is performance, yes. But other than that, like the, the con saying you need to fill out the entire team, you need to win on both sides of the ball or just at least contain and have some playmakers on one side of the ball. And when you have you're paying your quarterback fucking like three fourths of your salary, you can't do that, man. This is not a reality. If you look back throughout history, if you guys watched the video I did on Matthew Stafford and why it was time for him to go, is like there's never I think the average uh salary of a super winning quarterback is like I don't even want to speak on it because I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's way less than what Matthew. Okay, it was eight million. That's what it was. Yeah, because Matthew Stafford's was double that. You know what I'm saying? So like, and then these guys who get the big contracts, talented or not, they you stop. They stop making those Super Bowl trips. The highest paid quarterbacks to win Super Bowls was Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, and those guys are arguably goats. You know what I'm saying? Like, um. I think Micah Parsons could be Von Miller if he's used to as a pass rusher. Yeah, that's why I thought Micah Parsons – that's why my understanding with Micah Parsons was he's a pass rusher. That's why they really compare him to uh, Jared Davis at all. I just want a QB. It doesn't have to be first round either. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning away from the first round quarterback thing. I was, like, really heavy on it uh, just because I was a fan of the talent that was there. But uh, you can find quarterbacks elsewhere. I'm going to keep it real. But I also wouldn't be mad at a quarterback the first round. I was watching another podcast the other day, the Detroit Lions one specifically, and they're talking about taking a receiver in the first round. And I was like, yo, y'all tripping, bro. I, I was fucking with it. I was vibing with it. You know what I'm saying? My man spoke really well. Um, they were given – they just spoke well, and, you know, and, and the show was produced well. But when they said – talking about taking a receiver in the first round, I had to cut that shit off, man. I said, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here with that. You look at teams like the fucking Steelers who, who've been having like stud wide receivers. They ain't took a receiver in the first round since fucking God knows when. Shit. Unicorns. Uh, Stafford getting paid like an elite quarterback right now. Exactly. He's getting paid like an elite quarterback, but he's not performing like an elite quarterback. Uh, Dr. Troy, I was going to click on yours, but I, somebody else commented it was Troy. And he said, even the Pats didn't want to pay Brady. That should tell us all we need to know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying you can't win when you're paying your quarterback. The whole damn cap space. It's just not. It's just not realistic. You need to fill out other spots of the ball. And I think what, what New England did is you saw him sign Darrell Revis. You saw him pay Stephon Gilmore. You saw him pay for that elite secondary and, and, and eliteness on the, on the defensive side of the ball. 
Like, let's get it, man. I'm not a big fan of paying a lot of people too much money, to be honest with you, because I, I feel the same way, too. Like, next man up, because the football, you're going to get hurt. It's going to happen regardless. And so that's why I'm going to give Brad. That's, why this, that's the part I'm excited about Brad Holmes is like, yeah, draft us some depth. Because I feel like with Bob Quinn, we did not have that. As much as he had like, found some picks in the later rounds, I will give him that. He, we did not have any depth from his drafts. Uh, Trey Lance at seven. I am betting if they pick the old coordinator from Baltimore. We shall see, man. We shall see. Um, I'm hearing a lot of rumors that we might may trade out of it or trade down. I'm surprised other reporters asked Dan about Galladay. <sighs> I mean, that's more of a GM, more GM question. A guy they not get paid any trade. We can't afford to pay him, bro. For keeping it real, at this point, we can't afford to pay Kenny Galley. Um, I, I, and I fully admit Kenny Galley is fucking dope. He's an amazing wide receiver. I think he's even, even fucking cooler. And I apologize for not apologize for swearing, but I think he's even cooler. He's a third round pick. I respect that, and I always root for guys like that because I think those are like the dopest stories. And I'm not mad at dude for sitting out of a, a shitty season with a shitty coach, uh, because he wanted to get paid at the end of it because we didn't pay him going into it. Um. He's on a third round deal and he's playing it phenomenally. You know what I'm saying? He's a Pro Bowl talent on a third round deal. I'm gonna stay to get some some bread too. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm gonna reserve myself to to actually get paid and be utilized in a winning, you know what I'm saying, situation and manner too. I ain't mad at that. You know what I'm saying? With with, with my man fucking Patricia, I'm not I'm not risking my my livelihood at that point. Not livelihood in terms of like death, life and death or whatnot, but like livelihood of like your lab your family, your kids, taking care of your mom, your dad. I'm not risking that to play for a coach like Patricia who's not giving me results and wins and W's. Like, I'm sorry. And I'm not being paid. Like, I'm sitting my ass down too. Uh, the kneecap's about to get bit. Maybe, maybe. Um, I will say the generation, the era, and, like, you know, they can't even run Oklahoma drills anymore. So, like, it's the NFL's really cracking down on that stuff. Obviously, you have COVID rules with, with limiting contact with players too. So, like, we may be able to spare some kneecaps. We may be able to spare some kneecaps, I, I will say. Uh, I wouldn't be mad if we didn't sign him because his receiver class is stacked. Uh, you could get a stud receiver in the third or fourth round, but please do not take a receiver in the first or second round. Yeah, man, I'm not a big fan of taking receivers in the first round. I get that some some you know, some you know talent is phenomenal, and it's, it's hard to pass up, um, I guess. I mean, I'll, I'll say that, but uh, it's just not – Receivers is not that. You know what I'm saying? You don't need you don't need a stud wide receiver to win a Super Bowl. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think. So, I mean, we got the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship this coming weekend. Uh, they do have Devontae Adams, but they also have Aaron Rodgers. Uh, on the other side of the ball, NFC Championship, hella receivers, but not really being utilized. I think I think in the 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 win that Tom Brady had, only 199 yards. Um, and I don't know if those receivers they make Tom Brady look good, especially at this point in, in, in his career. Uh, yes, committee, you are right. What did committee say? Oh, about the yeah, the receiver thing. Yeah, I thousand percent agree. Uh, you can find a gym in the third or fourth round at receiver. Exactly, man. Like these receivers, man. You find them like like fucking left and right. Like you, they fall off the damn tree. And if anybody wants to tap into man and get their opinion on the on the Dan Campbell press conference or yeah, the Dan Campbell presser, um, I just shot the link down in the comments, man. Feel free to hop in. I'm looking for. The 2020 draft thing, but I don't know why Google just won't give me your draft. I probably just put in a draft. It's probably my fault. But uh, we shall see. Cause I kind of want to look at the teams that need quarterbacks, um, the teams that can afford to go elsewhere other than quarterback. Uh, let me check that out now. I did drop the link in the comments, guys. If you guys want to hop in, uh, give your opinion real quick. Uh, I'm pulling up the draft order right now. All right. Here we go. And this is the part where I said my computer is going to go laggy. But I'm going to pause this video. Just like my man Dan Campbell paused. Oh, no, I'm playing. I'm not going to go there. All right, so number one, Jackson Jail Jag Jacksonville Jaguars. I think, obviously, they're going quarterback. Uh, number two, New York Jets. It was rumored they want quarterback. They were in, they were in the, the runnings for my man uh, from Clemson. But now we're hearing that they, they may go elsewhere because they do have – a how do you guys feel about Sam Darnold? They do have Sam Darnold. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, not a for sure thing that they're going to take a quarterback. Um, they actually have a uh, – okay, they're talking about right here. The Jets missed out on their number one overall pick. They used their only number one pick to select wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson in 1996. The Jets have picked uh, second twice, selecting wide receiver Johnny Lamb Jones in 1980 and running back Blair Thomas. Okay, we don't give a fuck. 
And they're taking a wide receiver number two. They're idiots. Miami Dolphins, they're a team that could benefit from wide receiver. I don't think they're in the quarterback runnings. But who knows, man? Um, Flo- Flowers, I believe his name is there. Uh, he, he he has no problem uh, showing his his non-commitment to a quarterback. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be absolutely surprised if they took a quarterback there. But uh, look at Houston, man. That's fucking that blows, man. You got third overall pick and then just traded away. I don't remember who they got in that trade, but that, that sucks, man. Uh, my only issue is scheme on D would like to know more. <sighs> yeah, and we'll find out more. Um, that is a good point. Uh, my, the issue to it with my scheme on D for these guys is, is the fact that, like, where ass bro like on defense side of ball right now we are fucking trash man i don't even see pieces that like build off of i think i like trey flowers um i don't know if deshaun hands gonna be here next year i don't know i don't know his, his necessarily his contract situation uh if we have to keep stafford i can see us getting wide receiver chase uh but stafford leaves parsons from penn state or qb patricia sustain is that another oh, patricia sustain is that another uh quarterback name or cornerback name um hell no mike Shout out to you. Please hit that subscribe button. Um, like button too, guys, because if you guys aren't subscribing, that, that'll bring other people here to subscribe or at least to the channel to see if they want to subscribe. But uh, wide receiver in the first round for my Detroit Lions, you all all the way tripping. I'm not I'm not with that shit. Uh, I'm not with that shit at all. You can't you can't. No, hell no. I'm not. Here's the other thing, too. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll get the screen back up with the draft order. We've been giving this dude, Matthew Stafford, toys for years on years on years. He literally had Calvin Johnson, one of the greatest toys and pieces to play with of all time when it comes to the NFL standard of, of like, a receiver. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, dude, if you consider the best, you know what I'm saying? He's in that GOAT conversation. He didn't have the longevity of it. But we all know damn well if Stafford wasn't getting him fucking torn to pieces by having to jump out to catch these passes in the middle of the field and getting killed. He would have been in that conversation, and he still is in that conversation. We've been giving Stafford too many toys to invest another first-round receiver. On top of the fact that we don't know if Stafford's going to be here the year afterward, I'm not. We're not. I'm not that shit. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry if I got high about that one, but I'm a little fucking heated. I don't want to buy a receiver, man. Uh, do you think it was really a joke when Dan said, "I've already got guys I want to bring in for coordinators"? No, nah, that was a joke. Remember that? Do you really think that was a joke? Um. He he has guys he has like in his mind his favorites and whatnot. But I think um, after he met with Brad, it sounds like last night that they, they they spoke for hours on end. He said they were up to almost midnight. I think Brad may have opened his mind to at least interview more guys. And that sounds and then that I, I'm talking on my ass, but that's what it felt like to me um, because he also spoke on the fact that like if I want to hire a guy and they're speaking again to the coordinators and whatnot, um, I'm not just going to do it. I'm going to have the discussion with Brad first. And I think that's what's happening right now. He had guys that he wanted to hire. And I think he said he was joking because kind of dig at uh, picking at, you know, Brad Holmes because they had obviously had a conversation. And maybe Brad was like, no, no, no. And he spoke on that through the press conference. I'm not just digging this out my ass. But uh, so I think that was true. I think it was a joke, half halfway joke. He probably has guys, but he's going to go do diligence and interview guys. You know what would be a real attraction to me? And I, I doubt it's, it's the case, but if – if Brad Holmes had anything to do with hiring Sean McVay, then I'm going to for sure love that GM hire. You know what I'm saying? But he's, he's known as a college scouting guy. I doubt he was uh, too much there to, uh, you know what I'm saying, to be part of the yet. Uh, Reggie Bush, LeGarrette Blunt, on and on. Smith, best, that guy just smoked us two weeks ago. Who are you talking about? Dr. Detroit, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I like Smith, the receiver. Uh, but late in 20s, not at 7. Yes. Thank you. I agree. My man, Certified Osinta. Blessed to be here. Hey, Holmes. Welcome to the Speakeasy, man. Please head over to YouTube and subscribe. We are almost monetized. And it would mean a lot to me. You know what I'm saying? I'll be very, very, very happy. You know what I'm saying? Muy happy. -o. I don't know how to say happy. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, back to this draft order, though. Um, I want to see if the quarterback's going to be there. It'll be interesting if one of these guys are here, though. One of these quarterbacks are here, and we don't take them. Did Did Brad Holmes speak to his draft philosophy at all, as, as far as like taking the best available and whatnot? I don't remember. I might have to run that one back. I was live streaming that one too, but I was actually trying to commentate that one while I was while we streamed the presser. The motherfuckers were getting mad at me. That shit was funny as hell. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals are not taking the quarterback. So here we go. I'm going to count teams are taking quarterbacks. Um. Quarterback, for sure. 
possibly quarterback. I'll just count him as a quarterback for right now for the Jets. Uh, no quarterback for Miami. Ooh, fuck. Quarterback. I'll say I'll say Atlanta's taking the quarterback. Uh, people are, people have really been hard on, on on Matt Ryan recently. I've never been a big fan of him. Um, kind of like a Matthew Stafford situation where the stats are there. I mean, Matt Ryan even has MVP, but I think a lot of that season and, and that success was to do with the guy who's coaching in San Francisco right now. Um, and I can't think of his name right now. Whatever. Uh, possibly three QBs off the board at that point. Uh, there's four hot names since he's not taking one. Philly's not taking one. Bam. So we might get one of those quarterbacks might be on the board when it comes to the Detroit Lions. Uh, the Lions are picking the top 10 for the third consecutive year. That's so, ugh. And 26th time in the Super Bowl era. Could they be looking at the successor to 2009 number one overall pick, Matthew Stafford? I believe that is the case. And I think that's where we should go. Um, shit, man. I just don't want a receiver is all. But we are here to talk about the presser. We're talking about, the, you know, we just got done with the press conference from Dan Campbell. Uh, I like the passion. I am a little bit uh, nervous about the uh, passion and whatnot. I'll subscribe to you under M80. All right, man. I'll subscribe back to you, too, if you got videos. That's something you're trying to do. Uh, but as far as my overall take from this press conference, I like... I like the passion and I like the will over talent aspect, I guess, that he spoke on. Like he wants, he doesn't just want 52 guys. He wants the 52 right guys. And I think that's, you know, what you need. You need people to buy into your culture. You need people to be on board. And he's not necessarily a totalitarian type dude. It seemed like he seemed like he's a leader and he spoke on allowing guys to be themselves and whatnot. So I don't think there's going to be too much rift in the locker room, if any. I don't think there will be a rift in the locker room at all, especially, you know, from from what these guys just came from with, with Matt Patricia. Um, so I'm excited to, uh, I guess, start fresh. I don't like speaking on these coaches often anymore after the Matt Patricia thing because, you know, we were sold the bill of goods that he was he was a truth. You know, he he was a guy. This guy could have been a rocket scientist. He was a genius, X and O's guy. But the leadership quality there was was not. So I think that's probably most important when running an organization. I think is the leadership, and I think we have that with Matt Campbell. Uh, I called Matt Campbell purposely because he referred that to himself a couple of times at the press conference. I don't know what that was about. Uh, maybe we'll find out shortly. I did send out the link to the guys in DSA to see if they want to join, but I don't, I don't think they are. But I have 44 people in this fucking chat right now. That's what's up, man. That's what's popping, baby. What up, though? Welcome to the Speakeasy, man. Um, I like how he handled that bad question. He answered it straightforward like a grown man. Troy, yes, and I've spoken that, too. Um the bad question from I'm not even I don't care to name the dude's name. I don't, I don't even know who it was, but uh, he asked him a dumbass question as far as like the comments he made in the past. <sighs> and he and I, he respectfully answered, man, um, I did want to wrap this up, but we got 47 people in the chat, man. This shit's going way too strong, man. I got to keep this. I got to keep this rocking and flowing and going for a minute, dog. What up, though, baby? It's 47 of y'all. Somebody comment what y'all want in the draft. Somebody comment what you think about Dan Campbell. Somebody comment what you think about Brad Holmes. Is he the real deal? We shall see, man. We shall see. And speaking of Brad Holmes, let's look at some of some the Rams draft classes. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do with you guys because I, I did – everyone wanted, wanted to throw in my face the, uh, you know, Pro Bowls he drafted or, uh, you know, and and the, the pieces he, he took in late rounds that became starters and stuff like that. But no one could really say names. No one could really say names beyond motherfucking, you know, the, the big ones. Uh, hey, 40 watching the 10 likes. Hit that button. Mm, Dr. Detroit, shouts out to you. Shouts out to you. Thank you for that, man. For sure, for sure. Are uh, your thoughts on giving him a six-year deal? That is more of like a headline topic to talk about, the six-year deal, because all in all, even, even with the actual talent on the field, those contracts aren't guaranteed. It's not the NBA. It's not the MLB. Um, you know, he, he they could have given him a hundred year deal. You know what I'm saying? But if he's not getting the job done within, you know, three or four years, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? That the six years means nothing because there's no commitment to it on the line side of having to pay it. Um, it would be a bigger concern if, if it was a situation like that, though. But in, in NFL, you know, especially with coaches, it's not. So the six-year deal, as far as like being, uh, you know, concerned about it or, or like I just curious about it, I'm I'm not too concerned about that. But I guess analyzing it, like taking a step back and analyzing it, I think we need to 
step away. I think the retooling is, is more to like feed the fans to keep them like drinking the Kool Aid and hyped up and stuff like that. But like, if we're cutting the BS from it, a six year deal looks like a rebuild to me. You know what I'm saying? They asked him that question too. They asked him, is a six year deal more of the standard of the in- industry or is it more of like, uh, you know, the, I guess to try and find it, you know, is, is it more to, to give to under, understanding to the, the rebuild that we're heading into? And, uh, Rod Wood, the Lions president, really didn't answer it straightforward. I think he neglected to speak on the the length of the contract and whatnot. So, um, but I, I think that was more so uh, six year deal. I think we got to expect a rebuild at this point. A lot of people saying retool, but I don't I don't believe so, man. Um, bless up, he said. Bless up, G. Uh, we out here, Las Vegas Raiders, man. Shouts out to Las Vegas for, for grabbing the Raiders. I feel so bad for Oakland, though, man. I, I like such rich history there. And for them to leave, I think that was really how um, – I don't know what's going on with that situation, man. All these teams running to, running to Cali. Um, I, fucking San Diego had a squad, but they left L.A. I need, I want, <coughs> South Dakota football teams, man. I think – I think. I mean, the Rams were in L.A. originally. But the Chargers should just go on somewhere, man. Chargers need to get somewhere else. I think it's really ho the Rams copied the Chargers logo too. That shit was really weird to me. I give Campbell three years to develop this team. You know how I feel about this E. Yeah, three years is fair enough, man. I think he's gonna need at least two. At least two. Because say if you get this this quarterback, you know what I'm saying? The guy who's replacing Stafford uh this year, he's gonna need this year before he's like a finished product. As great as who's my man uh starting for the Chargers this year at quarterback. Um, I can't think of his name, but as great as he was this year, Justin Herbert. Uh, we obviously see that team didn't, you know, go to go to a, a playoff. You know, they didn't go 500. So, um, giving us, you know, another quarterback to, to replace Stafford with this year, obviously not, not going to do much with. And then the second year, total, total toss up up in the air. But uh, shit, maybe they maybe they can do it. You know, about three years, I think is, is just about right, Sean. Uh, shout out to Sean, the SK Sports Podcast Show. Uh, speak easy if you guys are new to this channel. Uh, we're kind of a collective. You know what I'm saying there's there's three main main guys. There's me, my cousin Aaron, and Sean is newly acquired to the YouTube channel. Uh, he'll be doing lots of sports interviews and whatnot. Uh, Sean, if you can comment who, what interview you're doing later this week, so I, I can let them know and they keep eye out for that and check you out too. But uh, my cousin Aaron, big 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 Detroit head, Detroit sports fan, which obviously I am too. But my goal with the channel is to cover all sports. Uh, I'm big in MMA too. Uh, the coaches are guaranteed money. Uh, the Browns are still paying. Hugh Jackson money. Ooh, Alex Sims with some facts. Hey, shout out to Alex Sims, man, providing some valuable information. I did not know that. Um, I will Google this question myself, though, because now I am curious because I've seen this both ways now. So are NFL coaching contracts guaranteed? Here we go. Look, that's already a question Google. Uh, oh, okay. So, and I'll put this on the screen for you guys too, so you can read as well. Look at that. Shout out to Alex, Alex Sims in the comment section, man, dropping knowledge on us. Um, give me one second here. I clicked the wrong button. I'm just getting a little too excited here. All right. Boom. Boom. All right. So this says uh, NFL playoffs. Ooh, it's, well, I don't know why it's playoffs, but unlike players, coaches are generally given, generally given a fully guaranteed contract, which means they're paid for the duration of the contract, even if they get canned. Okay. Let's say generally though. So let's see. This is from 2015. This is from 2018. Uh, we'll go to this article. I can take that on the screen, too, if you guys don't want to share the screen. Um, I just want to read it my, for myself to get an actual answer. Uh, Seven-figure salary. What terms do these head coaches face in their contracts? Termination. Football fans often hear the term three-year contract for some other determinable number of years. However, it is most NFL coaching contracts that a coach can be terminated within with very little notice, as long as there's a specific cause. Uh, how does this work? It usually hinges on a requirement that coaches leads the team agreed upon win-to-loss ratio. Uh, with wholesale. NFL coaches contracts contain provisions negotiated between coaches and the league regarding the NFL's right to withhold some of, or all of coaches' salary during a lockout. Oh, wow. NFL coaches have a, a – what do you call it? Union. Uh, coaches have the option – and are encouraged to join the NFL Football League Coaching Association, while some critics call attention to the NFL CA uh, for giving coaches too much bargaining power. Many coaches enjoy the benefits of collective bargaining. At this time, oh, Bill Belichick is only not a member of it. 
contracts are crucial. Your employment contract may or may not include $4 million payout, but the terms of any contract are nevertheless still very important. If you need a highly skilled contract lawyer, dog, I'm trying to find out if these fucking shits is guaranteed, bro. Tell me. Well, it looks like from the from a Google search, they are guaranteed. Shout out to Alex Sims for dropping some knowledge in the comment section. Uh, oops, rebuild. Yep, it's, it is, man. I mean, we'll keep it real. Uh, Herbert was the name I was looking for. Shout out to you. Shout out to Cody Paul and shout out to his cousin Jake and Logan. I fucks with Logan, Jake a little while, but you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them in the state of Ohio, except for Ohio State. I'm playing. Uh, why did Matt Patricia prefer to hurry up offense? But when it when I banged his wife, she begged me to slow down. Uh, because man, you know what I'm saying? My man, my man Matt Patricia, he he finishes fast. You know what I'm saying? He has that dagger time. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what he says when he finishes in that bedroom. He's constantly saying dagger time. Dagger time. It's dagger time. That's what he says when he's ready to throw that dick down on his wife. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Rising John Giants practice squad tight end tomorrow. And Appalachian State defensive back Ryan Huff this Saturday. Shout out to the SK Sports Podcast show. Those interviews will be on the motherfucking. Well, I don't know which one will, but one of them will. Which one, Sean? Let us know, man. Let us know. Uh, so what's going on with our defensive coordinator now? Is it still going to be Glenn? I think it's going to be Glenn. Um, I think that they're still kind of dependent on other interviews and if they're impressed elsewhere. But it seems like my man Dan Campbell is most impressed with Quinn. Um, I'm sorry. I believe it's Gwen, if I'm saying that right. Glenn. Um, Troy, I'm crying. That's my man Matt Patricia screaming in the bedroom. We're about to finish. Uh, uh, dagger time. <laughs> but uh, shit, man. I give you a trade cause. I hear Miami might want to trade Tua for Stafford. I'm cool. He's more, from what I've seen, he's more of a game manager. He's really, he's really intent to, to throw that football. I listened to interviews with him and uh, not with Tua, but with uh, Fitzmagic. He was speaking on Tua and, and his, his growth and whatnot. And he's just like, hey, you know, he's just kind of scared to pull the trigger sometimes. And that's obviously what it looked like to me. And if you look at the numbers, is what it looked like. If, if I'm not mad at having a, a game manager, no, because some game managers go to Super Bowls. But uh, I mean, whatever. But I, I mean, fuck it. It's a rookie contract. Maybe we'll take it. But I'd rather have one of these guys in this draft this year. I think I like these guys a lot better. I like the tangibles that they they have. I think like two like two was supposed to be like uh, Russell Wilson and uh, my other guy too with the running the football, making plays and whatnot. And I just didn't really see it. It was more of a game manager aspect from him. I, I'd rather take the chance of a, a playmaker too, though. To be honest, give me one second, guys. Uh, would you be upset if Kenny Galladay went to Chicago? He grew up in Chicago, might be a Bears fan. I would be upset having to fucking play him two times a year. He's a phenomenal athlete. He's a phenomenal wide receiver. That would suck. He would damage us. Absolutely, I'd be upset. Um, would I be upset if if he left the team? It's going to suck to see him go, but I think we have to digest it right now. Right now, if you're listening, you're a Lions fan, digest the fact that Kenny Galladay is most likely not going to be on this team next year. Just just digest it now. Whether he ends up in Chicago or elsewhere, like just, 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 like, 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 take him out of the squad right now in your head. Get it over with, man. Just let yourself take it on the chin, man. Take it on the chin like Matt Patricia's wife did for Cody Paul. Uh, hey, that's not a dagger. That's a Swiss Army. <laughs> that's a Swiss Army knife. That's funny as hell. Ryan on YouTube. Uh, Ryan John on IG Live. So make sure you guys follow. Sh- Follow Speak Easy. You'll see Sean on there. I'll make sure he'll post something today. I'll make him post a story and, and you know, tag himself. So you guys make sure to follow him. If you guys aren't following us on, on, already, man, I'll, I'll put our, our Instagram down too. Um, a lot of people want to be active on Twitter, but I'm just keep it real with y'all. Social media is ain't my thing. So, so we're, we're, we're a lot more active on Instagram as a team, but we will work on the Twitter game too. I want Deshaun. Um, Deshaun is nice, but I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't want Deshaun. Um, Maybe before I made that Stafford video, I would have said I wanted Deshaun. But again, these quarterbacks with these big contracts, they don't, it never pans out, man. It's, it just doesn't, like based off history. And I only did the numbers since Matthew Stafford was dra- was drafted. But that was also like the last last year that rookies could have like, you know, unlimited contracts before they put in, in uh, slots or cap spaces. Cap, the, before they started capping the rookie contracts. And the, the numbers only gonna get bigger from here. I I don't want Deshaun. 
I hate to say it, but he's he's great. He's a phenomenal player. Um, I'm gonna say I wouldn't mind having a brother for the team, but uh, for the numbers that Deshaun signed at, I'm good on Deshaun. We just saw the, the Texans go a losing season with him, and I'm good on him. Our bros say less, but they would never do that. I don't know what they said. I think they're talking about Tua. Uh, Tua and third for Stafford. I would take that just because I see the value in a third round pick, especially if a GM like uh, you know like Brad Holmes and he's been hitting on third and second round picks. Yeah, give me that. I'll take that. I ain't mad at that at all. Uh, find a way to get Stafford in New Orleans and work a multi-term deal, team deal to get Deshaun Watson. Nah, man. See, I'm good on Deshaun Watson. But what's up with these ladies in your picture, though, Phil? What's up with them? Hey, hey, who that? Who that? That gonna beat them girls? You know what I'm saying? Speaking of New Orleans, who that? But no, nah, man, I'm good, man. I am so good on uh, Deshaun and that contract, bro. I, I, I love him as a player. I love watching him. Uh, but I'm good on that contract. If, if I'm taking a big contract from any quarterback right now across the league, give me Russell Wilson. Because at least with – and a lot of these guys with big contracts that are really, really good, I mean better than Stafford, let's keep it real, are in the playoffs. You know, I can't tell you – you can't tell me that Russell Wilson had, had a defense this year. Uh, rushing attack, yes. But when you guys look and you rank these teams at rushing, let's not forget with teams like Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray – and, and those, those are quarterbacks that run the football. You know what I'm saying? Um, he said he wanted to be here. Talking about Stafford? Stafford for sure. Oh, Kenny Galladay. That's, come on, man. That's just like the, that's tell them what they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? He makes commission on his jersey sales. You know what I'm saying? The team is selling his jersey right now is a lion. So, you know, I'm going to tell Detroit, I want to be here too. Um, I don't care what happens. This is by far the worst franchise in NFL history with loyal fans. Bottom line, we need playoff wins and a shot at the Super Bowl. <sighs> a lot of the, the slap happy, Kool-Aid drinking motherfuckers like would hate to admit it, but we are I think we are for sure bottom three franchises in the NFL, and we do need we I, I, we need some fucking shit to happen. It's too many times throughout my life that like the Lions have been alongside bottom tier teams, and then we see like those teams rise to like the playoffs and Super Bowls. I think the 49ers won. The 49ers were terrible a little while ago, and bam, next thing you know, they're in the Super Bowl. Jacksonville Jaguars were laughing stock at some point. They almost went to a goddamn Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? They lost to, to, to the Patriots. Um the Jets, you know, they, they've been bad. They're bad now. But, again, they've won some playoff games. It's We are one of the worst franchises. we got to keep it real. I am ready for a change. Uh, that hurts to lose Galladay, but I know he's going to want a big bag. He's for sure going to want a big bag. He deserves a big bag. He can ball, man. Uh, we can't keep making unilateral moves uh, that will keep us at the same or worst level forever. And I honestly agree. I honestly, get rid of Stafford, draft the quarterback and defense. Yes, yeah, still rise. I'm with that 100%. Russell Wilson was better before he – <laughs> he sent for Sierra. Uh, yeah, his team was better too, though, man. Let's let's be real. His team was better. Uh, Robinson's the same thing in Chicago. Yeah, Robinson's a Detroit native. It's the same thing. He wants to come home. Um, I would love to have him come home. That's another situation where you're looking at a contract similar to Kenny Galladay. So is he's going to get another big payday too? I think there's a little bit of a pipe dream for the Detroit fans to, to keep saying that you know we want Robinson and we have a chance at Robinson. It's just that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's that's a big contract, too. And, and unfortunately, with paying Matthew Stafford as much money as we do every single year and having to fill out spots on the defense and, and sign rookie draft class and whatnot, we we may not be able to afford a big contract like that at the receiver position. And again, it's just one of those positions where it's it's replaceable. Let's keep it real. There was, though, there was something that made me question that, that you know, what I just said is like this year, the Browns played a game without the wide receiver and they, they looked pretty bad. So that, that made me, I will say, that's, you know, you do need wide receivers, but you don't need fucking, like, the cream of the crop. Maybe you need one. You need one guy's cream of the crop. Uh, that sigh is what all of us feel. Yeah, man. Yeah, the Browns, perfect example. Yeah, I just spoke on them, too. The Browns. The Browns are one of those teams that turn it around, man. Uh, Philly Philly says, sorry, I don't know why my cap lock was on. You're good, man. I don't even know if I, I must have passed this get through the comment, man, but – Guys, we got 38 people in this motherfucking chat. I gotta, I gotta tap in someone. At, Sean, man, join, man. Where you at, Sean? What you doing? Cause I gotta, I gotta, I do got a baby. Your boy Easy is a papa bear. Um, but I, I want to go check on him. They're upstairs. Oh, hold on. Alex Sims just said something. I do gotta show some respect to Alex Sims. He dropped some knowledge earlier. He said, "Do you think the Lions will resign anybody?" Uh, Jared Davis, 
Marvin Jones or Romeo Quara. I think Romeo Quara is one I would be interested in signing as a Lions fan myself. Jared Davis, um, keeping it real. And speaking on what you know, still rise four four eight five said like we are bottom tier franchise. Uh, these guys are free agents, and that and that they have choices of where they want to go. And after the experience that Jared Davis had here, after the experience that Marvin Jones had here, uh, the question is, are they going to want to resign here? Uh, Romeo Quara, uh, he may be a guy that we just we see the potential in because uh, for some reason I feel like other teams aren't as high as, as on him, and I don't even know if we're high on him. We have a whole completely new regime, uh, but. I think if it's just something in my heart and my stomach tells me, I think it's just uh, Romeo Quar is going to be the guy we bring in. Um, and you know what I'm about to do real quick, actually? Uh, let me do this. I did not know the NFL coaching contracts were guaranteed, though. That was an interesting fact. But uh, let me – let me. sorry, guys. I was typing something real quick, too. Um Let's get – I'm going to play something for you guys. I'm, I'm uh, real quick. Let's see. If you guys are new here too, man, I got a whole – we do podcasts as well. I like going live. I love talking about my lines and whatnot, but uh, we also do podcasts. Um, one of the podcast guests that we had is former Detroit Lion, Darius Slay. Uh, shout out to him for taking the time to come on the show. That was an awesome experience. Uh, we also had Glover Quinn. That was super dope too. Let me – Man, if you guys are still here in the comment section, let me know. I'm going to put a video on real quick and check my son. But which clip do you want? you want the Darius Slay clip or the Glover Quinn clip? I'm going to be really – I mean, Slay was because that's one of my players of all here while I was here in Detroit. But I'm like a lot. Glover Quinn drops a nod on me. But whatever comment, let me know. I'll, I'll put it on real quick. Um, just let me know, man. Uh, yeah, I don't think Holmes is going to resign many guys, if any. Glenn might run a different style, uh, which you know, which would need different players. Yeah, what are, what are the Saints on there? Four three, Slay, let's go, Slay all day. Say less, fam. I'm about to put it on right now. Hopefully, I'm got no copyrighted music in there. I don't remember though. <laughs> uh, I I asked Slay because the lines are are rough. I asked him. Uh, Hold on real quick, actually, because I did not put the audio on for this one. I asked them, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Because I know the Eagles had a bad year this year, but they did win the Super Bowl. They've been to uh, two Super Bowls. I asked them, you know, why was different? Uh, speaking of the D, I, I know we're not the greatest organization. I, I, know, <laughs> I know Philly got them a ring recently. Can you can you feel the difference? I guess culturally, like like with an organization that's you know has, that's had success. It, well, it's, it's a lot different because I feel like the um, the owners and uh, everyone that did affiliated with the Eagles, they're all around a lot, you know. And um, in uh, Detroit, you know, Mrs. Ford, you know, she was just you know she'd come to practice some days, but uh, you know. I don't think she was just like around a lot, lot, but she knew a, she knew her players, you know, most of them, the ones that she needed. And then, um, but over here, Philly, Philly man, uh, that's all, all, all it is around here. Football, so football. So he's, uh, from, from the um, from the top down, you know, from the owner to the to the janitor, the they know from players from scratch, 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 Yes, that's interesting, that's interesting to hear because I always wonder because I, I a lot of fans here like I always like scream like fire the owners or like we can't fire the, we can't fire the owner but it's about like you know what I'm saying it's the owners yeah. the owner but I'm always like well like they don't make the football decisions but but it's interesting to hear that you said the owners around and, and they're obviously more yeah successful. yeah I think I think you know definitely our owner here is you know, in Philly I think he really loves the game of football you know like he he pop up the practices out of nowhere you know during the middle of the season um. All that, so uh, you know that's the difference, you know, and um, you know, then with the uh, Detroit, you just know Miss Ford, you know, she was just, you know, Miss Ford, you know, I don't, yeah, you know, ain't too many ladies as in general. Not saying that she don't know the game of football, but you know, she'll be around something she'll love to see. But uh, obviously, she do uh, love the team, you know, but uh, just her interest as in, uh, I guess knowing football, just knowing 
what the receiver, what's a quarterback, what's all this, what's that, the position, that, that, that. Like I think I I think I only know the difference between cover four and cover three. <laughs> so so that's the difference about it. That's it. But uh, you know, they just yeah. that's it really. Yeah, she was she was getting up there too. I mean, I I don't know if she knew too much was going on <laughs> around her, but I never been around her though. Yeah, she cool though. She nice, she's a nice lady. Very nice. Yeah. I, I can't hear you, bro. Uh, I'll do it again. I said, what up, the ladies? <laughs> uh, what up, though? We're back. Um, I don't really know if that's a commercial break, but uh, whatever. We're back from the little break. I got my man, Sean. Sean Kieran from the SK Sports Podcast Show. Another Speakeasy affiliate. What up, though, baby? What's going on, man? I had, I had to tap in at some point. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm glad you did, man. Um, Did you get to watch any of the press conference? I know you're a New York Giants fan. You don't give a fuck. Uh, Sean's from New York, by the way, too, guys. But uh, how... Did you get to tap in for any of that? Did you have an opinion on, on, on the I, hiring? I, I didn't catch the press conference, but more, for more of what I caught was about uh, when we were getting into the contract discussions. And um, with coaches, I know you were scrolling through it online, when you, but their contracts, like money-wise, they're guaranteed, unlike certain players. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, you know how I feel about this situation. For him, I think you need to give this guy three years to develop a team. I think that's plenty of time to get a team on the map and just basically have a goal of heading into the postseason. I mean, like, that should be within three years. You should be all right. You should be building a really good culture. And for a reason, for the fan base, like like you, easy to have faith in this team moving forward. I mean, like, if it takes longer than three years, like, if it's going to take the fourth, fifth year of this contract, that, that's a major problem, man. It can't take that long. Yeah, and I think, too, like, I guess the other question would be the preface to that, or, like, I guess devil's advocate maybe is, you know, where, where, at what point are we happy? Like, do we want a playoff berth? Is that what we're looking for? Or are we looking for a playoff win within those three years? I, well, from, for your, for your fan base, I think you guys want a playoff win. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a lot more. Yes, to get to the dance is amazing just to get there, of course. But you guys need a win. If you yeah. can if you can get a win, like no matter how you get in there, if you end up obviously you guys won't be winning the division anytime soon. I hate to say that, but that's just being realistic. But um as a wild card team, I mean you just need to win that wild card round. That I think that's the goal right now for this team is just to get there, establish a culture, and get that first win in the playoffs and then you move on from there. Yeah. So, you know, we, we got them here. Um, three years from now, let's say we make the playoffs once in the second or third year, third year, we make the playoffs, but we don't, we don't get the W. Are you firing them or are you keeping them? Or is it just based upon other things too? I, it's, I know it's, kind of hard. It's, it's definitely based upon other things because if you make the postseason at least one time in three years, I'll give that to him for sure because I don't know if anyone is, is expecting that guy to do this. I don't think anyone, like big time analysis and stuff, I don't even know if they have Detroit in the playoffs within the next two, three years. So I think that if he can just squeeze in there his third year, his second year, whatever, um, it just, like you said, it depends on other areas where, where you guys are at quarterback wise, where you guys, how are they playing at each side of the foot on each side of the football, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying – I'm seeing if I get uh, – trying to fit an interview from Ian Rappaport on. I just don't know if it'll fit memory-wise. I think, I think it might be too too long of an interview to try to clip in here. But um, he spoke on the hiring too. Uh, same kind of thing, though. He said that, like, there's no expectations for him. And I think this, like, bleeds rebuild. You know, the, the fact that it's six years, um, the fact that the guy doesn't have experience, and, like, it, it shows you that they're kind of just – Going all in on, on hoping something happens, which I'm okay with because I'm at that point too. I think we've been at that point my entire like life as a Lions fan, other than like 2014. You know, we had the Dominic and Sue and, and all those guys. Do you do you have a take on the general managing hire at all? Uh I don't know too much about this guy. I have to do a little more research myself about him because I usually I usually know like background stuff about GM. And um, he's actually somebody that I don't too, don't know too much about just yet. 
But um, I think it's a decent hiring. Obviously, you, you have no choice. I mean, since you're a Lions fan, you got to give him a shot because it's either that or then what's the point of even watching the team? Yeah, so, no, thousand percent. It, like what we were talking about in the comments section about the draft and everything, I am 100% on the same boat with you, Easy. You cannot go receiver in the first round. And just about any other position this guy needs to drift. Anything else, but not a receiver in the first round. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, Still Rise commented, he says, It's so crazy to me how this franchise and ownership has had such lack of awareness. Our Lions are laughing stocks. Everything's giving we get airtime, so that's good enough. Uh, we usually lose anyway. My... And, and that's why I so I, I picked that specific Darius Slay video because I wanted to know because people always say like fire the owner, fire the owner and, and whatnot. And I never truly understood wh- like why owners could be at fault. But he explained it to me well. It's like you got to have someone who, who gives a fuck and a little bit off the camera, too. I, I don't want to put all this out there, but like he spoke on like the, the Eagles owner bought the team. So he has like some pride in wanting them to do well. With the, the, the Ford situation, it's inheritance. You know what I'm saying it's, it's like this was just given to me, and, you know, and, and, and like it's 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 money. You know what I'm saying at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, do you want to win? Yeah, but do you give a fuck? Is there a passion to win? Is there any sense of pride to win? No, because it's fucking like inherited. It wasn't it wasn't like a fuck like you busted your ass and bought it, and, and now it's like a you want it to do well, you know. So I'm just speaking on like that's the ownership aspect because because uh. Troy commented a lack of awareness, and I think that's what it is. I think it's because these guys inherited a team, and there's no pride in it. It's really just like a gift or whatever, just handed down. Yeah, that, that's how it is with some owners out there, man. I feel like it's just some guys just don't give a flying F what the heck they're going to do. I mean, they'll just bring in whoever. They'll hire whoever. They'll be like, okay, let's give this guy a shot as the GM. Let's give this guy a shot as the coach. Who cares? Let's see what happens. I'm just, I'm still making money off this. That's how some owners feel. Yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of fans think that, okay, just because they own a team, that means that they put all their time and effort into the team. That's not true. There's a lot of owners out there that just don't care. For example, different sport, but look at the Knicks owner, James Dolan. I mean, does he give a flying F what the heck is going on with the Knicks? No, he doesn't yeah. care. He threw out he threw out a Knicks legend outside of the garden last year, Charles Oakley. He threw him out. You, you believe that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what does that tell you just in general sometimes about these owners, man? They just some of them just don't care. No, a thousand percent, man. Um, shout out to everybody rocking with us too in the chat and subscribe and all that stuff, man. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, and shout out to Sean for tapping in too, man, because I love getting the outsiders take because I do be drinking the Kool-Aid sometimes. I will fully, fully admit I'll be drinking the Kool-Aid sometimes. Uh, on this one, I am taking it a step at a time. I'm gonna be relaxed. I'm not gonna be relaxed. I'm, I'm gonna react to things, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep a positive mind going. Into, I'm gonna give these guys a chance. That's what I'm gonna say with this with the new uh, regime and whatnot. What do you think they should do with Stafford, though, from an outsider standpoint? Because I, I know people here. It's, it's really, pol- it's a polarizing topic, Matthew Stafford. Because you either love him or you fucking hate him. And, and like, I kind of fall in between, but I also fall in between where like I don't hate him, but we don't need him. I'm not in love with the dude. From, but from an outsider standpoint. It, what what is Matthew Stafford to you, and what what do you think we should do with him? Man, I, he's a he's a good quarterback when healthy, obviously, and I think you guys had your shot with him when, especially when Jim Caldwell was the head coach, and when you guys had Calvin Johnson, you could have developed more, got more uh, weapons for him, and I think that was your shot with him. And then now, all of a sudden, look at the team, look at the situation, constant coaching changes now, GM change. I think it's time to move on from him. I think it's better off for him. I know that might hurt Stafford hearing that, like, oh, man, I'm actually – I might get dealt. But I think it's better off for him to get into a new system now at this point in his career because I know – what, doesn't he want to win eventually? Does he want to get to the postseason eventually? I don't see that happen for many times soon if he stays in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just it's, it's time to break up, man. Like, I get it. I get the moments that he had here. I've witnessed them. I, you know, I felt the passion in all of them. I think the most fucking baller ass one was the one against the Cowboys. Uh, you know that that was one I probably remember the most. Matthew Stafford's greatest Detroit quarterback in history. Let him ret- no Mars, no man. Like that, like you, you're you're like doing this off of like feelings. We need to separate from that. If if you're a Lions fan, you're gonna want the Lions to do well. 
the Lions doing well is without Matthew Stafford. He's the greatest quarterback of our of our history of our franchise history. We don't have fucking quarterbacks, bro. And we don't have shit to compare to. You know, like it's not saying much in saying he's the greatest quarterback in our in the franchise history. We, we're we're a terrible franchise. Like, and, and on top of that, teams are winning without him, man. And, and we can do the same. I'm not I'm not scared to fucking leave him, but. We just can't win paying him that much money either, man. He's he's not top tier, not worth paying that. Detroit Lions need to get to Deshaun Watson from Houston Texans this season 2020. No, I'm good on that contract, man, to keep it real with you. That, for me, when I look at these quarterback situations, and I, again, it's, it's, it may have been because I recently did that Stafford video on why we need to leave him, but fucking – I guess the high-end quarterbacks that are paid that much money, when they win, when they get the Super Bowls, it's without, without the big money. It's when on rookie deals and like all the spots of the roster are filled out along with their like obviously phenomenal play. Aaron Rodgers, phenomenal. Uh, Russell Wilson, phenomenal. But once they get that big money, those teams in those other areas, they lack. And then you don't see Super Bowl, Super Bowl wins from them. Mm-hmm. The highest paid quarterbacks in the Super Bowl, Peyton Manning and Tom and Tom Brady at 19 million. It was, or yeah, Stafford, like the average salary is 8 million. I'm sorry, I had to correct that. So once they get these big contracts, the teams fail. It's a team sport. You can't pay these guys as much money and expect to win. How, yeah, I'm sorry for talking too much, guys. But uh, how do you feel about the Sean Watson? Do you think that's like a piece to win with? Or how do you feel about the contract situation and taking him on? Like, if you guys would make that move now, the major question is how many picks would you are you going to give up in this specific draft class for him? And now – what are you going to surround him with? You know what I mean? Like, what happens, let's just say, if God, if God, they, like, if you get, let's just say you trade for Watson before God, they leaves in free agency, right? Let's just say that would happen. All of a sudden, heads are spinning in that offense. They're probably wondering, okay, should is God, they going to come back? Is Marvin Jones? What is the story there? Who are you going to surround him with? And I'm just not sure if he would thrive in that sort of offense where, Especially with a new head coach in Campbell now, I mean, I don't, I don't see that really working out. And yes, he's an elite quarterback, Watson, but there's going to be a lot of suitors for him. There's going to mm. be the Jets involved. There's going to be the Dolphins. There's going to be uh, the Niners. Um, there's one other legit team that I forgot, but um, maybe the Bears. Possibly that could be a legit team in on him. But and or who knows? Maybe he stays in Houston. Maybe I was going to say, man, I think I think he might stay even. Out. Yeah, for sure. Because like, this is this is the NBA where guys that can force their way out of teams you know, and on new rosters and whatnot. It's 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 like a the NFL. The money isn't guaranteed for the players. I know we looked it up for the coaches. Shout out to Alex Sims again for for dropping the knowledge on that one. But like, I don't, I can't really think of too many NFL players who force their way out of, into a trade. Maybe Antonio Brown comes to mind, but like, it's usually like fuck you, you stay here. You're kind of stuck, bud. Like, sorry, we just we just paid you all this fucking money. We're not gonna take a fucking 20, 30 million dollar cap hit to like let you go because you want to throw a fit because you, you know, you, I don't know. That's just how I feel. I'll, I'll say this I think Watson's whole entire perspective changes if they actually hire a coach that he ends up liking. That changes the whole entire perspective all of a sudden. Just, just watch out. Whoever they hire as their head coach, if he, w- let's see his reaction to that. Just stay tuned for the, his reaction for the head coach because if he really likes it, he isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wonder, too, this would actually be crazy. Uh, Detroit Lions will trade Stafford for Deshaun Watson from Houston Texans this season, 2021. I I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, that's that, I, I guess, like, just – I wouldn't be mad at that, I don't think. Just to see how it fits, just to see how it goes. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Because that that is doing one thing, getting rid of Stafford, and then – I guess you are still taking on that big contract, but you, I guess you just get to see what it is. That's, I guess that is something you could put into the air because they're both looking. You know, Deshaun Watson wants out. Houston probably wants a quarterback in return. Stafford is from Texas. That might be a thing. Am I tripping? But let, but let me ask you this: How many first round picks are you willing to give up? Because they're going to want at least. At what I've been hearing, their their goal is to get at least three first rounders. Yeah. It depends hey. how many first rounders are you willing to give up and some other picks. Uh, they're, that's not it. They're going to ask for a few more after that, too. I'm not giving up no freaking damn. Just yeah, got to be careful you know. the amount of uh, draft capital you're giving up there. Yeah. Shout and, out to uh, Mar- Watson's going to be a great get, obviously. He would. 
I'm not saying Watson's a terrific talent. has nothing to do with that. But for your specific franchise, that's that's a really uh, iffy move for me. I, w- I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't do it either. Actually, I'm thinking about it. it. I would be intrigued. It would be a sexy move and somehow just keep our eyes on as a fan base, but as like a franchise, like longevity. Mm-hmm. Hell no. To the no, no, no. Hell no. Uh, Mars Lane said, good luck rookies. He says Lions make rookie moves. I think keeping Stafford's a rookie move. Look at the Indianapolis Colts, what they do. They let go of arguably the greatest quarterback in history in Peyton Manning, and they bounce right back with Andrew Luck. So Mars Landing, go on somewhere, dog. Oh, you're not even a Lions fan? This guy. <laughs> I will not cry. I, hey, I pro- let Stafford go, bro. I, I don't give a fuck. Like, let him win a ring. I still wouldn't give a fuck. If Stafford wins a ring, he leaves. I don't think that good. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I, I've seen he ranked he ranked 28th in, in completion percentage this year. 29th in completion percentage under a clean pocket. Oof. People tripping on him a little bit, man. People tripping on him a little bit. And you let, you know. Talking feelings, definitely talking feelings. Coach, he said Colts didn't bounce back. Colts are trash too. You sound like you don't know football, bud, because the Colts were in the playoffs this year. <laughs> and they're going to be a good team next year. Uh, Philip Rivers obviously retired after 17 years playing in the league, but it's going to be really interesting talking about a quarterback carousel this offseason. I mean, where the heck are they going to go with their new uh, starting QB? Jacoby Brissett's a free agent. I don't know if he's going to be the starter moving forward. Is it going to be the rookie, uh, Jacob Eason, the kid they got out of uh, Washington? Or is it going to even be a uh, Carson Wentz? What are they going to do? It's going to be really interesting to see uh, Indy. Yeah, that is good. That is good. Uh, I wonder what they are going to do with the quarterback position. I, they're not going to get Deshaun Watson. That's in the same division. Uh, they'll never do that. Um, at least I'm talk- talking about the uh, the Texans probably would never make that trade. But they definitely got to do something, man. I mean, obviously you can get there without – an elite quarterback, but it probably helps your chances when you do have one. But it's like, who is available? And, and they're they're late in the draft because they did well this year. Maybe I, I, don't think, I don't even think they draft somebody in the first round. Like, they have somebody, this kid Jacob Eason already. If they draft a quarterback, I think it'll be later in the draft. But if they're going to get a quarterback, it's going to be via trade or they're going to go after somebody in free agency as they're like their starting quarterback. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, who, yeah. Let's look at let's look at the uh, free agents this year. Let's do that. It'd be fun to do. Look for your Giants too. Yeah, your Giants. Your Giants are one of those teams that are really interested in Kenny Galladay this year. They almost made a trade for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gettleman was actually uh, the reports that were out there about Gettleman's interest was one hundred percent true because it reminds me of the scenario of uh, going after Leonard Williams. The Giants were out of playoff contention. And they made the move. He gave up a third and fifth round pick for Leonard Williams, and. Um, Obviously, they ended up franchise tagging and they keep him here. Now he's a free agent. Once again, they're going to have to sign to a long-term deal. But I know Gettleman wanted to do that move. He wanted to make a trade for Galladay when the Giants were out of the playoff race. But um, at least he was smart this time around not to give up uh, draft picks while you might have a shot at him in free agency. Yeah, that was, the sad, that was the weird part, too, is like the uh, the fact that Leonard Williams is going to be free agent. Like, why would you – yeah, why don't you just throw the money at him now? Exactly, man. Or See, I, I, I still understand. I still don't understand why he did that. But <laughs> as long as so, you, you gotta pay him now, you gotta pay him now. Is this true? Von Miller's a free agent this year. I thought that he didn't he resign with Denver. Yeah, I, I wonder if this is maybe like a team option or some shit. Oh, club option. So they could they can d- decide to cut him at this year. See the red right is, there means club option. If I'm, not mis- if I'm not mistaken, is there like a story going on with Von Miller lately? He's been yeah, in the news. I did see something, man. Um, I saw one domestic thing with his wife. It really was just kind of text, which I thought was stupid. This is like, the, that's like, so 2021. Um, fucking everybody gets mad and says angry text. But there's mm-hmm. something else that came up that they, they did not release the exact information on. So it is kind of weird. It is kind of weird they didn't release it either, the info on it. Oh, that's, just- that's interesting. Leonard Williams, unrestricted free agent. I would love to get him. Uh, but I'm, you think he's you think he's resigning with the Giants? 
I, I want to say he does. I think that I think they need to do everything they can to keep him here. But if he leaves the Giants, watch out for him in Carolina. I think Carolina has a shot at him if he leaves the Giants. But Dupree's a free agent. That's one I like for my Lions, linebacker from Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, Shaquille Barrett, Jacoby Brissett. Patrick Peterson is going to be a free agent this year. Wow. This, this free agent class is really good. It's going to be interesting. I mean, the receiving class is really good. Even look at the potential running back free agents. This, that's supposed to be an interesting class. You got you have guys like Marlon Mack, uh, Philip Lindsay from Denver. Um, I think Leonard Fournette's a free agent as well. There's a there's some decent uh, running backs out there. I know Aaron Jones hits the market, but I don't think he leaves Green Bay. That would be freaking crazy if he leaves Green Bay. But um, yeah, he's, he's staying. I saw him. What it depends if Green Bay wants to pay him. I'm surprised they haven't locked him up by now. Yeah. Like my here, I'll give you a team. If he if somehow Green Bay doesn't lock him up from some for some odd reason, um, expect Miami to be in there. I think Miami would end up uh pursuing him. Yeah, I think it, fucking everybody, man. Aaron Jones is actually a really good uh running back. I'm looking at the quarterback market too, since we were talking about uh those Colts. I mean Dak out possibly there. Fitz Magic, Tyrod Taylor. Andy Dalton, yeah. Yeah, not that sexy of a free agent market, I guess, for quarterbacks. Joe Flacco's there. Do you give him another chance at starting? They're going to have to trade. They're going to have to make trades. And, yeah, that's, why this, make and trades. that's why this quarterback carousel is going to be really interesting this year, man, because there's going to be a lot of movement with free agency, obviously, and then you got trades. A thousand percent. I've got a Falcons fan in here. He says, I thought Eric B was a better choice, but we'll see. Eric B for the Falcons or Eric B. For- Here's my thing about the Eric B stuff too. I think it's time to kill the hype a little bit because the fact that we he hasn't gotten hired. I granted the Chiefs are still in the playoffs and whatnot, but like, kind of speaks like maybe he's not ready. I don't think he's. I don't think he's ready just yet. Yeah, because yeah, it's the same thing with Robert Salah. People are like, oh, you missed out on Robert Salah. Like, I don't. I don't think so, man. Like, there were like a lot of vacancies open. A lot of teams interviewed these guys. Eric B and me, Rob Salah, and if there were the guys that you know they were supposed to be heading into these, these interviews, they would have been, you know, nabbed up. We would have seen reports on them signing deals and whatnot. And that just wasn't the case. So I don't think that they are ready. I, I think Eric B is kind of really codependent on Andy Reed and maybe just needs another year of just like, you know, being in an organization and maybe studying more of like a head coach's role. I mean, I don't know. I'm not there in the interviews, but we shall see, man. We shall yeah. see. But Hey, I mean, if I'm the enemy right now, why are you in a rush to leave? I mean, you're running a terrific offense. Yeah. I mean, this this team every year, as long as you keep that offense gelled together, I mean, you always, you're always going to be a Super Bowl contender coming out of the AFC. You're always going to be involved. You're always going to be in the discussion. So, I I wouldn't be rushing out if I if I were him. He has plenty of time, plenty of time to get the opportunity. Yeah. Shout out to Mars Landing who can't spell free agents. That was kind of funny. I see that in the comment section. I'm not gonna put that comment up there though. But uh, shit, Sean, I uh, I've been out here for like two and a half hours. Yeah, I now. see you. Holy shit! I know, man. I, I can let you run the show if you want to turn to something else, or we, you can start a whole new broadcast yourself if you want. I think I might wrap this one up though, man. You you can wrap this one up, but uh, stay tuned for uh the episode tomorrow, guys. Uh, we have the uh our preview right to the championship week. Okay. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, right. That's yeah. Tough. NFL championship episode tomorrow. What time? Did we ever agree on a time for that? Uh, not yet. But I, I think uh, Frankie said any time after two, two and that thir- yeah. any time after two for me works. So. Okay, I'm thinking. It might, it might end up one of those late episodes, but if I can get it in around like five, four, five, maybe we'll do it then too. That works. Yep. All right, man, shit. We'll talk some playoff football other than, like, Detroit, Detroit football or not. I think we spoke on Dan Campbell enough. He, he had his press conference. I will – I'll release the whole presser without this, and then I'll release our, I guess, reactions too, or you guys click on the video, whatever. I don't know if anyone's going to want want to watch two and a half hours of this, but if they do, fucking shouts out to you guys, man. <laughs> uh, if you guys haven't already, please head over to YouTube, hit the hit the subscribe button, or hit the like button. Uh if not, if you're on Twitch, hit the ball button. Facebook, we on Facebook every once in a while, but YouTube's where it's at for sure, man. Sean, uh, when's that interview with Rise and John? That's gonna be one on YouTube. Uh, that's the one on Instagram. That's at two o'clock tomorrow. Then uh, the Ryan Huff one I'm gonna do on this platform on YouTube Saturday. So stay tuned for that one. All right, but hey, well, thanks for taking the time. Uh, if you guys haven't already, hit the like and, and subscribe button, and uh, we out of this one.